Hello, very good evening. In today's lecture, we will learn about script editor, how we can use script editor for coding and what are basic mail commands that you can use and how you can find mail commands of other operations that you perform in mail. My name is Dr. Shan Bhatti. If you're here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you receive the tutorials and notifications on mail programming with Maya regularly. Let's begin. Now, we talked about mail in previous classes as well. If you have not watched my previous lectures, I will link the, leave the link down below. Do watch my mail lectures and introduction to mail. What's mail? Mail is basically again a very powerful tool within Maya and entire Maya is based on Maya embedded language called mail. All operations that you perform within Maya are basically uh, reciprocated in form of code, in form of a script called mail. So whatever you do from creating an object to extrude, to poly, to chamfer, to bevel, to whatever modeling operations you perform, everything is basically done through a code and that code is echoed on your um, script editor. So when we create an object, we modify it, everything gets studious. And you can do the same thing without actually doing the work here. You can write a script to do that and that will be done automatically using mail language okay so in this class we will talk about mail how we use it so you we open the script editor if you have not already done that if you inside your maya you can click on this window here and it will open up the script editor this button at the top right bottom right corner sorry and you can use this here or if i did previously was that we can use this layouts two pen layouts three pen layouts how you want to do then you can have a script editor in one pane and you can use the viewport on other panel okay so what i did in previously was that i did a two panel layout and i switched it to script editor so i have my script editor in one panel and i have my maya window i can close the channel box for now so i get a little bit bigger view of what i'm doing within a script editor this is the history this is the where we write the code now for example we can write the code print bracket start brackets close hello maya okay so this is the basic print statement print statement is used to print some output on your mail scripting window now for mail this is like your coding area this is like your output area so whatever you write here some code output will come here some will come into your viewport so technically you would be using all these two three things together so we write the code here we see the feedback of the out output here and we see the output actually on in which ref refers to the objects onto this thing so for example in this case i select this code and in order to execute it i press Control enter now this is where we write the code. Uh, whatever code you want to do within mail, we will go through a few commands here. We write the code in our mail window. We select that particular line of code that we just did. You can press this play button here. It will get executed or you can use control enter. Control and enter at the same time within your windows will execute whatever code you have selected. If you don't select this code and you just press control enter right away, what happens is that that code gets disappeared from your input window. Assumingly, you want to execute something, it gets executed and you don't no longer need it. But if you need it, you again either need to retype it. Hello. Sorry. And you write, oops. Hello, Maya again. So you need to retype it. So that becomes a hazard if you want to retype everything again and again. So we either copy paste the code again from here as well. So you can select this code, right click, copy it and paste it into this window here. But again, that becomes as you start to type more and more code, this window gets more cluttered and copy paste becomes very difficult issue. That's why the trick we use is we select the code that we want to execute, press control enter or this button and that particular line gets echoed onto our output so for example in this case print maya hello world and the output is print here hello maya again now you notice one particular thing is that the print statement got echoed with the previous line as well so for example if i come back here again watch this last line hello maya again okay watch this last line if i execute it again you would note that the command got echoed appended to the previous output it didn't came on the new line However, the output came on the new line. That's because that's the output. Automatically has it that it's supposed to go on the new line. But the echo command continued from the previous line. This, in this case, the print statement. In order to ensure that it comes on a new line, we basically use other tags as well. So for now, this is the print statement. Print we use for debugging purpose primarily. And I think that was the main purpose. You want to print this certain debugging code, certain points of the code. I want to see the output of values and everything. Other than that, we basically use this Maya viewport. So for example, I just delete this code and I want to write poly cube semicolon. 
what this line indicates that I want to create a polycube. So I press control enter, it will give me a result polycube one was created and you can see this object was created. Now this is the command polycube, just same line. In order to create an object, we just wrote one word polycube, it created the command. If I write C small, Maya smell is case sensitive, it will not recognize this. Now this polycube is something we call the built in commands. These are what we refer to as built-in procedures that Maya has already done for us. We just need to use them. They are like libraries. They are just like books. They are there. Somebody has already done it for you. All you need to do is know their name to execute it. Once you execute it, the commands gets operation uh, executed. Okay. So in this case, polycube or for example, poly SVHCRE sphere. This is another command to create a sphere. So if I come in my viewport, move this object a little bit aside, press control enter, this object gets created. As simple as that, nothing else. Now to select the cube again, I can select in my viewport, but because I'm doing coding, I will write another command select. Now this select again is a built in procedure. By built in procedure means it's a code that's already there. This is where we call, uh, this is what we need to now understand that when we do scripting, we need to learn certain scripts, certain procedures, that are built in, pre-coded, and we need to understand them, we need to learn them to perform our custom operations. So to, if you want to select an object, you need to learn how you, which code actually you would use to select. In this case, select, and then I give the name polycube1. Press enter, polycube1, okay, semicolon, plus enter, polycube1 should be executed. Oh, I think it's just polycube, what's the name of this object right so you need to know the name of this object it's called p cube one sorry so i just write p cube one semicolon control enter now p cube is selected similarly if i deselected here to so now note it gives me the command minus cl so in order to do select anything we write select minus cl minus cl represents clear selection so whatever we whenever we need to clear selection this is what we do again in order to select press enter polycube is selected so this is where we write the command and the key thing here is the predefined procedures either being select or writing the name of an object that you want to create either polycube, polysphere, polytorus, whatever object you're creating you just need to specify its name. Similarly print these are also what we refer to as built-in functions. So in here this is where we write the mel command with pre-built-in functions. Now print is supposed to print the output on your browser uh, on your uh, this is what we call the output area the history panel within the script editor so once we do that we need to write a string quotation here the object is created so for example i can say come back here create a polycube okay again once that polycube is created by the okay default that object should be selected or I can uh, rename that object. So I write another name, the rename. Now, how do we know what is the code to rename? I don't know. So what I do is I come back here. I say click select. So I get the code here, select minus PQ. Okay. I come back here in the channel box. I said my cube, press enter. And it gives me the code. Then I want to move this object to a particular 0, 0 axis. As soon as I do that, it gave me another command. This is the beauty of MEL. This is the, you know, an undefined and unprecedented effort by MEL and by Maya that, I, which, which I think something you cannot find it anywhere else. That whatever operation you are performing within your Maya, the code, the actual source code gets echoed back in your script editor. And you can view that code and based on that you can write your own script so what we did here is we created a polycube then see this polycube rename so when we create a rename my object gets uh, this is the code that I get so I need to rename it so what I do is when my object is created I can say select minus ls okay what this will basically indicate that So now what I can do is I say bracket start, bracket close, rename P cube 2 because I'm assuming that that will be a second cube is equals to 
and I will give this as uh, S E C O N D second Q semicolon. Then select S E C O N D second C U B E cube. Okay, or I can write the command here as well. Select minus C L semicolon. Select second cube. I deselected it and again selected. Then print object is created. Hang on. Control X. Bring it here. Then again I come here and I say print object. Okay, okay, okay. Wait a second. Wait a second. It gave me an error. That's because we have still not executed or created this object yet. Okay. Or I can name this object. Now oh, I can come here and I can say minus name. Oops, sorry, not here. Come back here, minus name, and I can give it a name. This name can be, for example, uh, for example, table box. Okay. So what I did now is I wrote multiple lines of codes. Let me explain to you what I did now. I gave it a command, predefined procedure, poly cube. It will create a new cube, and I gave it an attribute that name this new attribute as table box. Now I don't need this rename command because I've already renamed here. I can say here, but I want to see the output, right? So I said print bracket start bracket close inverted quotations. Now we use inverted quotations because we are using string here, any general text which needs to be within inverted quotation marks. If you don't use inverted quotations, it will generate error. So within this inverted quotation marks, I said a new cube with custom name is created. Okay. So what I do now at this particular point, I just select these two lines. Okay. Within these two lines, I click on execute. Now what, because I've selected only two lines, what Maya does that it will only execute these two lines because this is execute. If I click on this button, execute all will execute everything. But what I want, I just want this selection to be executed. So what I'm doing now is I'm saying it that execute only these two lines of code. So you are, see what happened that it created a box called table box. I moved it aside and it printed, it echoed the command as well. So polycube, my name, this command gets echoed. This print statement got echoed. Okay. So like I said, everything you do gets echoed back in your script editor. Similarly, a new cube with a custom name was created. Okay. And the custom name was created. Then obviously I moved uh, this object uh, from this point. That's why we got a move command as well. So this is what we do in script. Now here the semicolon basically indicates that you are writing multiple lines of code. So that's why the semicolon is quite important. Now I come back into this rename code and I can say, okay, let me just rename this table box as uh, TAV table top. Okay. So now I execute a rename for whatever purpose. Okay. Just follow the multiple lines of code that you are trying to write. Now I can write, because I've done here, I can write the object is renamed. Okay. So see this and then I give a semicolon. Don't forget to do that. Now double quotation are here important because they indicate that you're writing a string. Okay. And then uh, why I use a print statement here, here, print statement basically gives me a visual feedback. What's going on? Okay. Then select nothing because I've done here, select clear will do that select nothing. Then again, I say go inside here and use select statement and then I give the name of the object that I want to select. In this case, table top semicolon. So select table top, the object is and I want to say S-E-L-E-C-T selected. So I select everything, control A will select everything, control A, everything is selected, control enter, everything gets executed. <coughs> This time we get an error, invalid path table box. That's because there is an already an object called table box and that's why it gave me an error. So what I do is let me just remove it and let's just remove everything. Come back here and control enter again and it again give me an error, invalid path table box. So less. now what happens is that we use these print statements to debug that how far we went and then this error statement will also tell you that error on line number three. Okay, so that's why feedback line is sometimes very essential that you get an error, error at line three. So line three says T-A-B-L-E, 
however the object that we name was t a b e l okay so let's see the spelling mistake that we did uh, unintentionally so let me just say now what should i do so i said okay no problem no problem no problem i select this box and i say not l e in fact e l so now i execute this line press enter object is renamed to table top and then i can say print object blah 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 control enter everything gets executed okay so now you see i have all the feedback here let's try this one more time delete it control a select everything press control enter everything is now perfect no error object is created print all the commands initially get echoed and then you can see the output a new cube with a custom name is created the object is renamed and blah 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 so all the output strings get output on the same line that's a little bit problem so what we do now is we go and use something called backslash n and within this we say backslash n and then this within we say backslash n okay again i delete this object so avoid any name conflict and then control enter sorry execute this thing now we see a name is there a queue object is there everything is here backslash n here behaves like a, a new line uh, escape character so if you're coming from other programming languages like c++ java c language they all have this backslash n backslash n indicates that print this line on a new line okay or give a line break after this line so after this print this line there is a backslash n so it, the cursor will go automatically to a new line so the next text comes back on a new line and then again it directs the cursor to a new line so print statements are used for a debugging purpose as well that all are the codes being executed we can use a multiple line codes of statement within my uh, mel we created a cube we printed an output we renamed it we printed it we select nothing then we again selected then we again printed these are what we call writing a simple mel scripts how we got to them rename first we do it ourselves every operation that you perform here gets echoed back here and you get the actual code then i can move it for example semicolon i can say okay now move minus r relation this is x this is y this is z okay so three values we give x y z if i use it as it is nothing will happen because again the 0 0 0 so i can say okay once the object is created move it to 10 in x 0 0 now what we have done here is we have moved the object with respect to its current position means wherever the object is at its current location move this object 10 pixels from there so i select this particular line press enter the object gets moved 10 pixels here so now you see that you have created an object and then you have moved it to 10 pixels similarly you can write a script that will create an object change its location perform extrude operations perform bevel chamfer and whatever you want to do it and create a script that would automatically behave so in next class we will try to do that in next class we will try to model an object record all its steps and then create a scripted and then use the script to do that or uh, duplicate of that object whenever we want okay so stay tuned subscribe my channel support me uh, 70% of you guys who are watching this up till this point have not subscribed my channel please do that so you watch these mel lectures cool uh, regularly thank you very much see you around